Recently on the Giant Bomb podcast, Jeff Gersman said this. You know, someone asked me yesterday, like, hey, you know, when you think your review is going to go up? And I'm like, I, no one... <laughs> No one on staff wants to play any more of this video game. Like th this, we I, I'm not going to subject myself to another 20, 30 hours of this fucking mess. It's really to, upsetting. To, just to put a number on it. I, My I, number I, is fucking don't play this game. With 30 hours already invested into Fallout 76, I was struggling to play any more. When I heard these words from Jeff, they were a revelation. I immediately closed the game and began writing this review. Fallout 76 is an atrocious video game. If you're having fun with it, good on you. But as Billy Madison so aptly proves in this scene, you can literally have fun with a flaming bag of shit, especially if it's with friends. Whatever your personal opinion on this, Fallout 76 is objectively a shit game because it was not what was advertised to consumers. Its technical state would make the term alpha blush. And there isn't a single new, innovative, or well-designed game system in the entire bloody mess. In short, Fallout 76 is morally, technically, and creatively bankrupt. And in this review, I want to show you why. From the very first moment that Fallout 76 was revealed, the lies began. We always start with the world, and this time it features all new rendering, lighting, and landscape technology. It allows us to have 16 times the detail. This is Todd Howard, head of Bethesda Game Studios, talking about the technical leaps that he and his team made with Fallout 76. We were clearly in for a visual treat, the likes of which we've never seen before from a Bethesda game. The reality couldn't be further from the truth. Fallout 76 is a hideous looking game that looks like a PS3 game at best and a PS2 game at worst. Interiors in particular look nightmarishly bad, almost as though they were coloured in by an abstract artist who recently made the move from watercolours to pastels. For every wooded area we traipse through, at the end of it is a town or a hotel or a hospital that's been lifted straight out of Fallout 4. You cannot boast a visual leap when 95% of your art assets are dragged and dropped from a game released three years ago. All of this is even more disappointing when you consider that modders got Fallout 4 to look pretty stunning by the time they were through with it. Bethesda was so lazy that they couldn't even be bothered to copy and paste the work done by modders and incorporate it into their own game engine. The second most egregious lie from Bethesda about Fallout 76 was this one. Fallout 76 is by far the largest project that we've ever done. It encompasses parts of the studio in Maryland, Austin, Montreal for Bethesda Game Studios, as well as we're getting a lot of help from other parts of Bethesda. Um, some of the great folks at id Software, Arcane, ZeniMax Online, and so it really is a huge undertaking, not just for us, but all parts of Bethesda. Many of you will have not played Fallout 76. I've played about 30 hours. The mere suggestion that this buggy, unfinished, lifeless, asset flip of a game was a bigger undertaking for these guys than Skyrim was, that suggestion enrages me. It is such a bald-faced lie that I don't even know where to begin. I won't even bother deconstructing this bullshit now. Just keep it in mind throughout the rest of this video and that will be all the proof you need to understand that this statement is utter rubbish. I think that the much talked about beta was also inherently exploitative and deceptive. Firstly, it was only open to pre-order customers. This is not an unheard of practice in and of itself, but almost every bit of marketing you see for Fallout 76 sells access to the beta as a key selling point for pre-ordering. Beta access should not be a selling point for any product. The fact that your progress is carried over from the beta into the game's full release further compounded the marketing value of this beta. Clearly Bethesda were looking to lock in excited Fallout fans, eager to be the first to play the new Fallout adventure. Fans who did foolishly put their money down on this scam were thrilled to find that the beta was only available during very specific timing windows, often when people were at work or otherwise unable to play. This was made worse by a PC bug that deleted the beta client on the first day of the beta and the fact that a near 50 gigabyte patch was issued halfway through the beta that fixed almost nothing. People with limited data caps were fresh out of luck. The core deceit of this beta though was the fact that it was not a beta at all. With two weeks before release and with the sheer volume of bugs, glitches, technical deficits and poor optimization present, it was dishonest of Bethesda to dangle the hope of improvement in front of players. 
My video criticizing the beta has over 1.1 million views now, and its dislike ratio and the thousands of comments criticizing me there were in large part because people were convinced that Bethesda would fix everything before the release date. Given Bethesda's long and well-documented history of shipping buggy games, this was very foolish thinking, but Bethesda indulged it nonetheless. If Fallout 76 achieves nothing else, I hope it serves as the indisputable proof that betas released two weeks before a product ships aren't betas. They're demos, or at best, server stress tests. Separate from all of this, I think the most misleading aspect of Fallout 76 is the ambiguous way it was presented to people. Is this a single player game or a multiplayer game? Yes. Is Fallout 76 really new and different, or is it something more familiar? Yes. Is this game for more traditional Fallout fans, or are you trying to attract a new audience? Yes. Is PvP really core to the experience, or is it more of a side activity? So there's always there's always PvP, like you can never, it's all... Well, we, first of all, I'd say we're still dialing that. Okay. We don't want it to be griefy, but we want to have some drama there. Okay. So there is a way that you can decide to do PvP, uh -huh. and we are currently balancing kind of the incentives for someone who wants to be uh, very aggressive to people yeah. and those who want to ignore it. Yeah. And that really comes down to, um, you know, the in-game incentives and then also the social incentives. Country road. When Todd Howard first started speaking about Fallout 76, it was immediately apparent to me that he was speaking out of both sides of his mouth. One moment the game was familiar to Fallout fans, fully enjoyable as a solo experience, full of great storytelling and lore we'd come to expect. Todd specifically said that 80% of this experience was the same as a regular Fallout game. At the same time, Fallout 76 was being sold as a franchise spin-off, this bold experiment and a radical departure from the traditional formula. Todd and the Bethesda marketing team were trying to appeal to all players simultaneously without ever committing to a specific vision of what this game was and who it was for. It seems a distant memory now, but cast your mind back only two months or so where we literally had no idea what Fallout 76 was. We didn't know what sort of game it was trying to be because Bethesda was so unwilling to show us. Trying to understand what Fallout 76 was felt like reading tea leaves. Now, in retrospect, it's clear that the reticence to share any information was designed to obfuscate how little appeal this game held to anyone. It's rare that I would ever declare a game immoral, but I think the sum total of these deliberate tactics to deceive and ensnare consumers marks a low point for Bethesda and for games in general. This was a deliberate campaign to trick you into buying this shoddy product, and I honestly take pleasure in the knowledge that it's been largely unsuccessful. There are a lot of games released each year in a poor technical state. Most of these are from small indie developers with limited resources who charge significantly less than $60 for their products. Fallout 76 is a $60 game, or a $200 game depending on which version you purchase, not including the microtransactions on top of that, and it's made by Bethesda Game Studios, one of the largest and most successful developers in the history of video games, and it's published by Bethesda, one of the largest video game publishers in the world. The technical state of Fallout 76 is so far beyond acceptable that, as Jim Sterling commented in his recent Jimquisition on the subject, it honestly forces me to revisit my opinion of previous Bethesda releases. It's like when you want to cook a frog. You don't throw it into boiling water because it will just jump straight out. What you do instead is you put it into cold water and then gently bring that water to a boil. I feel like we're the frog in the water, and Fallout 76 is the point at which we finally realize that after two decades of buggy releases, we've all been cooked alive. Fallout 76's technical failures exist on four levels. The limits of the outdated creation engine, the optimization and performance of that engine, bugs, and the UI design, particularly on the PC port. Let's talk about the engine first. The creation engine is built on the old Gamebryo engine, which dates back two decades. That is not to say that Fallout 76's engine is two decades old, but it is to say that there are still bugs in this engine that have lasted for two decades. That is indisputable. The engine is old and out of date. It cannot properly handle running above 60 FPS, as the game's speed and physics are linked to frame rate. A recent patch seemed to fix this. Even then, some people are still getting the physics bugs, so take Bethesda's assurance that this problem is fixed with a very large grain of salt. The engine struggles with adjustable field of view, does not support ultra-wide resolutions, and cannot handle native 4K very well. Its lighting engine is decidedly last gen. Its physics result in myriad situations where you are just scratching your head wondering what the hell is going on. As I mentioned earlier, all of these issues have in fact been solved by modders who bootstrap solution to these things over their time working with the creation engine. 
But none of these improvements have been incorporated here because Bethesda just couldn't be bothered. You'd think that with such a basic feature set and being almost a decade old, the creation engine would at least run smoothly on modern day PCs. I mean, it's clearly not pushing any visual boundaries like Red Dead or God of War, so surely we can get this thing running pretty smoothly at 60 FPS, right? Wrong. The optimization and performance of this game needs to be seen to be believed. I have a GTX 1080 Ti and an i7-8700K. It can run pretty much any game on Ultra at 144Hz, no problem. I cannot run Fallout 76 on Ultra because it tanks my performance well below 60fps. I run it on high settings and I don't run it at my usual 1440p because that's also too taxing. I stick to straight 1080p. Even with these settings, I will very, very frequently get huge frame drops down to as low as about 20fps. Pop-in is completely off the charts, lighting is straight up broken, and anything more than about 30 feet in front of you will become blurry because the engine is trying to scale down detail to maintain performance. Every issue I've listed above is worse on console. I played the game on Xbox One X and it was also a train wreck. I often hear, hey, it's running fine for me. I don't know what your problem is. Good, I'm glad it's running fine for you. It's not running fine for most people. Don't trust me? In the description, I've left a link to the Digital Foundry analysis where they demonstrate just how bad this bullshit is, with an Xbox in particular dropping down to about 10 frames per second. These guys analyze graphics for a living and they're very good at it, so just listen to what they have to say. Okay, let's talk bugs. In fact, fuck it, let's not. Everything you've heard about bugs is true. I can't go more than about five minutes playing this game without encountering a visual, physics, AI, UI, or server bug. I can't be bothered talking about it except to say that it's the worst I've ever seen from Bethesda, and that's really saying something. I feel bad for the QA team that will be blamed for this, when the real crooks are the upper management who would have seen this list of bugs and said, fuck it, ship it anyway. The UI in this game demands special mention. I struggle to think of how it could be worse. The Pip-Boy interface was cute and immersive in Fallout games, but it was annoying to navigate at the best of times. At least you could pause the action in Fallout 3 and 4, so if it took you a while to do what you needed, that was fine. Here in 76, you can't pause the action, and navigating your menu during tense moments is extremely frustrating. This is a mod for Fallout 76 that came out three days after the game was released. It offers a vastly improved UI experience Experience, dividing your stuff into useful categories and showing you weight limits per category. It is the perfect example of how little effort Bethesda have put into any part of this game. Rather than update their UI for a new, always online, unpausable experience, they simply dragged and dropped the old UI from Fallout 4. If a modder can do better than Bethesda in three days, what the fuck have Bethesda been doing for three years? This point about the UI bleeds into the final point I'll make about the game's technical performance, and that's the topic of the PC port. This is one of the worst PC ports I've seen from a AAA studio, especially one that has such a strong PC community behind it. In addition to basic options like refresh rate, field of view, and ultra wide, and a bunch of other stuff just missing, the UI is ripped straight from the console controller setup and crudely smushed into the keyboard and mouse setup. You have to use so many unnecessary keys to do simple things here because Bethesda didn't bother to properly configure controls for the keyboard and mouse. It's awful. Fallout 76's performance is in the toilet, but it's actually future Bethesda games that worry me much more. Recently, Todd Howard confirmed that they would be using the creation engine for Starfield and Elder Scrolls 6. Speaking to GameStar back in June, he said this, for Fallout 76, we have changed a lot. The game uses a new renderer, a new lighting system, and a new system for landscape generation. For Starfield, even more of it changes. And for Elder Scrolls 6, out there on the horizon, even more. We like our editor. It allows us to create worlds really fast and the modders know it really well. There are some elementary ways we create our games and that will continue because that lets us be efficient and we think it works best. I know that graphic engines evolve and improve with time. I don't want to beat an alarmist drum here, but I will say this. Todd thinks that this engine that Bethesda is currently using lets them be efficient and thinks it works best for them. I don't agree. You cannot look at these results and see efficiency. You cannot look at these results and see works best. I look at these results and see absolute failure. So to see Todd praise this engine and commit to it to the next decade's worth of releases from Bethesda, when we still have bugs in Fallout 76 dating back nearly two decades, 
I'm sorry, but I think that's just as bullshit as the way 76 was marketed to players in the first place. You know, it being us, it's extremely ambitious. I'm a bit of a softie in most regards, and I'm generally willing to cut a developer some slack so long as they're trying new things, big things, ambitious things, etc. Like No Man's Sky, for example. That was a shitty game at launch, but it was also made by about six people and they were trying something extremely ambitious. Sean Murray oversold that game, but they really did strive for an inspiring, never before seen ideal. So for that reason, I was never really that angry that No Man's Sky sucked. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take, said Wayne Gretzky. They took a shot, they failed, I respect them for trying. Fallout 76 takes no shots whatsoever. It aims for nothing remotely interesting or ambitious. It's the video game equivalent of the bunt, and what little they do try to achieve here, they fail at categorically. Picture yourself in a room with a bunch of people and it's your job to design the perfect online Fallout game. Picture big, elaborate quest lines where you can do these with your friends. Think of build diversity that allows for interesting team compositions. Think of building new cities together or pursuing life as a raider or playing as a super mutant. Think of all the possibilities inherent in Fallout with friends in 2018 and let your mind truly wander. Now, witness Fallout 76 with its shriveled up, uninspired vision for what online Fallout could be. A game with no NPCs, no narrative, no meaningful RPG, no hub areas, no real gameplay loop. It reduces the franchise to a dull looter shooter where the loot is literally garbage and the shooting is absolutely terrible. It's the least amount of effort or design work that you could put into this and still call it Fallout. Beyond the lack of ambition in this gameplay formula, every game system is hopelessly conflicted and compromised. This is best demonstrated by looking at the game's major elements. Its narrative, its quest design, its combat, its crafting, and its PvP. Story first. The game has no story. There are people in the comments section who will spring to Bethesda's defense, saying that Fallout 76 is dripping with rich, engaging story. You just need to listen to the holotapes and read all the scraps of paper and all the notes on the computer terminals. That's not story. That's lore. Calling it story is like saying Destiny 1 had story because it had grimoire cards. No, there is no story in Fallout 76, and the only way you will enjoy the narrative or lore in this game is if you are that 5% of players who enjoys getting their story from computer terminals. If you're one of these people, great, you'll probably like Fallout 76, but if you're not, then Fallout 76 has no story. The decision to deliver the lore or the narrative around holotapes and terminals is directly at odds with the co-op focus of this game. It's better with friends is the mantra. Is it better with friends when you're trying to listen to a holotape and your friends won't shut up over voice chat? Is it better with friends when one of them wants to sit there reading every line of every entry on every computer terminal when you just want to go outside and keep killing shit? Is it better with other people when there's no push to talk and some dude starts running up to you and like yelling at you and this dog's barking and his kid's crying and you're trying to immerse yourself in this fallout lore and experience when you just have all this shit in the background? No, it's not. You can't design a co-op experience and deliver its narrative through things that don't work in a co-op setting. That's exactly what Bethesda did here. Owing to a lack of engaging narrative or NPCs you can relate to, the quest structure is hopelessly compromised. With no stakes to care about or dialogue choices to engage or NPCs to accompany you, every single quest without exception is go here, loot this thing. Go here, click that button. Go here, kill that thing. Every quest feels like an MMO fetch quest or one of those side quests you collect from the bulletin board in the center of town in an open world game. Combat, man. Okay, combat in Fallout 3 and 4 is propped up by VATS. The gunplay is not good and the enemies are very poorly designed so you need VATS to be able to hit things regularly. In 76, you can't pause combat, so traditional VATS doesn't work. It's been twisted into a glorified aimbot that looks as ridiculous as it sounds. To be clear, the core issue here is enemy design. Fallout's enemies are not designed to be shot at without VATS. Most of the enemies run up to you and crowd around you, blocking your view, forcing you to walk back endlessly while you reload your weapon. Many of them scurry about your feet, forcing you to look down, meaning that you have no peripheral vision. Many of them simply move way too fast to be shot at. Many of them burrow underground, so you can't shoot at them at all. 
Enemies in well-designed shooters present themselves as targets so that you can engage them and feel good about that engagement. Bethesda could not be bothered to develop a suite of enemies that work in the absence of a traditional VATS model, and as a result, the entire combat loop falls apart. This is in addition to the utterly baffling decisions they make about what level enemies are, where those enemies are at any point in time, and how much HP each of those enemies might have. You go to one area and it can have level 6 enemies right alongside level 25 enemies and the level 6 enemies die in one hit and the level 25 enemies are complete bullet sponges even though you yourself are level 25 and you should be doing normal damage to them. And the north part of the map, the south part of the map, doesn't matter. Anywhere you go, it's a complete random potluck chance of what level enemy you're going to bump into at any point in time. It's ridiculous. Okay, let's talk about crafting. Now, the aim of Fallout 76 is in large part to collect as much junk as possible so you can scrap it and build stuff with it. This means that the core gameplay loop outside of combat is collecting junk. Building a game around such an asinine gameplay loop may seem baffling, but don't worry, it gets worse. The carry limit you have is so absurdly low that you basically cannot loot or collect anything. You'll spend your entire time playing this game obsessing over your carry limit because it doesn't allow you to just go out and collect stuff like you want to. Just heading out with a full suit of leather armor, some basic supplies, two or three weapons, just the bare minimum will immediately take up about 60 to 70% of your carry capacity. And you have to leave vast amounts of valuable materials and weapons and armor on the ground because you simply cannot carry them. If you do get them back to base, you'll find that your stash has the absurdly low limit of 400 pounds. This means that storing weapons and armor and all that sort of stuff in the long term, it's basically impossible. With what few materials you do have, the crafting is a tremendous chore. You need to unlock weapon and armor recipes by deconstructing weapons and armor. But because your carry limit is so low, you can't carry back many weapons and armor to deconstruct, which means that unlocking recipes is painfully slow. The crafting of your camp brings frustrations to new levels. Terrain difficulties make putting items down extremely annoying. Your turrets just don't do anything because enemies can literally appear from the concrete foundations that you've laid down. When you log out, your camp can be removed if someone happens to build near your existing camp. So you have to rebuild the whole thing when you log back in. You can blueprint a camp, but most of the time the terrain issues I mentioned mean you cannot place it down again. PvP is the best example of how compromised this entire game is. Fearful of the dreaded griefing that so many people fear, Bethesda have completely neutered the PvP experience. It requires an awkward handshake that no one wants any part of because there's no reward structure associated with PvP. There's no reason to do it at all, so people just pretend that the whole PvP system isn't even there and they go about their business. There are no good gameplay systems at work in Fallout 76. Not a single one is interesting or innovative, and not a single one isn't deeply compromised to the point where the system just has no value. It is a complete failure from a design and implementation perspective. In November of last year, the internet exploded in response to EA's attempt to monetize Star Wars Battlefront 2 by stuffing it full of loot boxes which were tied to in-game progression. It was a violent uprising from consumers who were finally fed up with increasingly insidious and exploitative microtransactions. It led to immediate change with numerous publishers removing loot boxes from games or offering the no loot box guarantee as part of their core marketing. Seeing the reaction to Fallout 76, I think a similar reaction is occurring here. I think people have finally had enough of AAA publishers releasing broken, unfinished games and then asking us to pay for the improvements over time. Fallout 76 feels like the straw that broke the camel's back, and it is for that reason, and that reason alone, that I am glad it exists. Fallout 76 is an unfinished, unimaginative, and unacceptable product that Bethesda should be ashamed of, and having seen how bad this is, I feel foolish for letting Bethesda off the hook so many times in the past. No more. I have gone from being giddy with excitement for Elder Scrolls 6 to being actively hostile. If they are willing to sell the Fallout franchise this far down the river, what's to stop them from doing the same thing with Elder Scrolls? Country Road.